Hello, Ray Lee, Speedboat Magazine, here with another episode of the Boats and Bros podcast with my bro, Myra Coyle, and we've got longtime offshore champion racer, Billy Moore. Hey, Billy, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys? Good. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Glad yeah. to be here. So we're going to kind of renew this. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, so you've been in social media lately uh, just due to the fact that class one and your team DeFalco is saying that you're going to uh, have a new boat this year and uh, it's going to be a victory boat compared to the outer limits that you ran last year. Yeah, we, we ended up with a victory boat that I've run in the past. Um, it, it's actually one of the Qatar team class one boats that we had years ago and i know the boat pretty decent um it's kind of the infamous white boat from key west so to speak like 2017 i guess but um <laughs> i think it's a good boat we're doing a bunch of work to it re-rigging it for the mercury engines um we got good team behind us mike's you know giving us all the resources and he's gung-ho about it he's pumped excited so i think i think for us it's a good step that's cool. Yeah, I know that uh, you were always praying. Uh, well, you pray for rough water, whatever boat you're in. <laughs> so, but you were really praying for rough water whenever you were in the DeFalco boat last year, trying to, uh, you know, get that equal playing ground, as we, we say, because the rough water is always a big equalizer if your boat is big or heavy or uh, all those other things. Yeah, it's funny. Everybody's like, you love rough water. I'm like, man, I actually don't like it that much. I just want it over with, I guess, quicker. So I just stand on it a little harder because it's like the harder I run this, the quicker I can get out of there. So yeah, I know that. No, I think it'd be fun. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, but I, I know that you might not like it, but you're definitely good at it. Uh, the rough water, <laughs> that is, because... There's times where I'm like, I cannot believe that they can be pulling away from us now when I feel like we're going a 120%. But anyway, kudos to you. I, re I remember even back in the day when you were in the uh, in Gary's Nichols boat when you guys were grandfathered in to have the uh, rudder drive in the Supercat yep. class. And I guess it would have been like 05, 06, somewhere in there. And it in the rough water, that thing was a beast to battle against then also. Yeah, that that boat was a lot of fun, especially in the rough. I mean, it's like, I don't know, maybe I grew up running with my dad testing. And it always seemed like I got stuck in some bumpy water off Miami or something. Summertime, it's always kind of nice. Like towards the wintertime, it gets lumpy. I mean, if you're in South Florida, you kind of understand that. But, um, yeah, I mean, everybody says you're, like, really good in the rough. I'm like, man, I just want it over with. Yeah, so we had Steve Curtis on the podcast last time, and he was talking about, and it was surprising to me, and you probably knew this, that he was a 188th Street guy. So you were growing up on 188th Street also. Yeah, growing up down there was just different. You know, I hate to say, like, we didn't know any better. Like, there was always something wild or crazy going on, but to us, it was normal. You know, there was definitely a lot of interesting characters on 188th Street back then. That'd have been cool. It'd be cool. If there was one place I could go back in time and hang out, 188th Street in the mid to late 80s would have been something that would have been excited to go go hang out and, and see. Yeah. Well, Billy, obviously your dad is the legendary offshore racer, Bobby Moore. And uh, tell us what it was like growing up as his son. I mean, growing up as as my dad's son was, I don't want to say tough. I mean, he was definitely hard on me. You know, he didn't, it wasn't like, oh, you're the boss's son, you get a pass. You know, he expected more out of me. Um. You know, so, but at the same time, I think that makes me today, so to speak, you know, I always try to put 110% in anything I'm doing. Um, and, you know, growing up in his shadow, so to speak, when I started racing, 
I mean, I don't want to sit here and be like it wasn't a pressure cooker or it was terrible or this or that. It was kind of a lot of pressure just because, you know, everybody expected you to do so much. So it was like if you had a bad race or something goofy happened, you know, somebody would be like, oh, your dad would have done this. So, I mean, you kind of grew up understanding that what's going to happen. Yeah, and it was funny because over the years, I love racing the boats, but I love racing dirt bikes, motocross, and stuff like that. And to me, the motocross thing was like an escape because I could go to a, a dirt bike event wherever it was in the country, go race. If I did good or just got beat, like miserably, I didn't care. Nobody, there was no expectations. You know what I mean? And it was just, as long as I had a good time, I didn't care. And like, you didn't have the pressure. Nobody cared who my dad was. You know, nobody expected anything. I was just some, you know, number 313 on a dirt bike that, you know, thought he could actually hold his own and probably get my ass kicked everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But there was no, yeah, thought beforehand. Why, why does he suck? Because look how good his dad is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, but at the same time, I was fortunate enough to do a lot of stuff because of my dad, you know, with who he was. I mean, my first boat race, I was 19 years old, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and a 46 skater in the open class, which was class one. That was my first race. I've had people that are like, man, would you start out in a 24 skater, a 28 skater? I'm like, no, 46. Class one, open class. <laughs> and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah I was 19. But you know, the funny part, mom and dad didn't even go down there. My dad's like, go down there, have fun. Don't get on your head. Okay, pop. You know, fresh out of high school. So <laughs> you know how that was. That was like total chaos. <laughs> Billy, we were, we were talking earlier, and uh, you said that your dad noticed something about you when you were 14 and, and kind of shared with you that uh, you still remember to this day. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story. I mean, I was probably, I think, 14 years old. We're going down the beach from Hall over to, like, Government Cut, and I think a 40 skater. We're probably running three-footers, two-foot, three-foot. And we're running, like, 110, 115, and the old man's like, son, are you scared? How you doing over there? I'm like, no, oh, Dad, I'm good. This is great. He goes, you sure you're not scared? I'm like, no, oh, Dad, I'm great. This is fun. He goes, son, you're just too stupid to be scared. And sometimes <laughs> I have to tell myself that. Don't be too stupid to be scared. Like, I have to woe myself up every once in a while. I can hear him saying that. You're just too stupid to be scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a, it's having, the, like, your uh, conscience on your shoulder, and it's your dad going, <laughs> yeah. You dummy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when you're sitting there talking about like in the rough, every once in a while that pops in like, hmm, I'm going pretty quick out here right now. And it's pretty snotty. <laughs> and nobody's like on my ass. Let me back it down just a little. Yeah. I don't think you back it down that often. <laughs> well, nah, the two, yeah. two of you guys have been you guys have been competing against each other for quite a while. Now you guys are competing, well, again, competing against each other in two classes with Class 1 and Super Cat. Tell us about that. What do you guys expect for the uh, the Class 1 for 2024? I, I don't know. I hope I hope my boat's better, and he hopes his boat's better. <laughs> yeah. So. I hope I stay. I, I hope I can get out in front of him and stay in front of Mark. I mean, yeah. no. so, so, so we basically hope for the same thing. And at the end of the day, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. And we hope to not get laughed by two, two, two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No kidding. It's like, it's like, what do we got to do to catch that guy? I, 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 and I'm not trying to be funny. It's like, I'm not that worried about Myrick. I'm more worried about Giovanni and Darren laughing me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, whoa, those dudes are fast. Yeah, but pretty cool. In all, all, all honesty, Ray, racing with Myrick, I mean, I remember the days with Bacardi Silver, Dave Scott, and all those. It's been fun. It's been competitive, but it's always been like a friend-type deal. 
no matter yep. what happens, sure. it's always like, hey, man, good race, good run. You know, what you want a beer type thing. It, it's it's always yeah. been fun and very respectful. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think we've ever had a crossword. No, you know, we I mean, ran side by side, side by side a lot, and yeah, I don't think there's ever been any like, man, what'd you do? Or not that I can remember. At least. <laughs> no, and that's the thing. I mean, it's always been like, hey, I got respect for him. I know Myrick's gonna like not leave me a ton of room here in this corner, but at the same time, he's not gonna put me in a bad, bad spot. You know, he's not yeah, just gonna yeah. open the door and be like, hey, come in. You know, but at the same time. He's not trying to take your head off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were, you were, I were, I saw the other day that, you know, one of the, you were talking, they were talking about the goat and you were said Johnny Tomlinson in your mind. And he was my mentor and he was like, well, don't make it easy on him. So, you know, I was like, I'm not going to make it easy on him, but you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the way you were trained, but don't hurt him. You know, I'm like, I got it. So. Anyway, but yeah, I think of the same thing when I think of Billy. I mean, I I just know that, you know, if he's in a good boat, he's right there with us. You know, sometimes he's been dealt a, a boat that's not quite as good as what I was lucky enough to be in. And, uh, you know, but then then uh, once he got in the Supercat class, once he started getting in these newer 388 skaters, he's right there battling for us with uh, in the great L boat. And uh it's cool. I always like to see them uh, up there, up top. That's for sure. I was going to say, like, running against was- Myrick and Tyler in Supercat is just, it's its fun. I know, like I said, we're going to try and not kill each other out there. It's a gentleman's race, but we're not going to just, like you said, let somebody in. You're not going to make it easy. But at the same time, if I get beat by you guys, I'm not upset. Cause you're a good group of guys, if you know what I mean. And, it, and it's all fun. And it's yeah. like, you know, racing against you guys is just not trying to be funny. It falls to the wall. Cause I mean, you guys are pretty aggressive, so you have to get mm-hmm. aggressive to match it, you know? And I'm just in there holding on for dear life. <laughs> Tyler's in there trying to rip the sticks off. Just like you. I'm just holding on. <laughs> I don't know. So, Billy kind of uh, admitted it. to that before. Well, I, I I made the comment in Supercat, you the the throttle man. When we get to the turn, when you arrive at the turn, it's not like you're really backing off. You just hold it flat out, and it's like, hey, boss, you got this, and just let it eat. I mean, you just let it go. <laughs> you know, and so like the old days when people used to say, oh, well, the driver's not doing much. Get in a Supercat now. That driver is driving his butt off to keep the thing going yeah. around the corner and not getting upside down. I mean, you have to wheel it. And, you know, it, like I said, and there's a big trust factor, especially like with our two boats going into the corner pretty close to each other at that speed. You know, you got to know, like, your driver is capable of not putting himself in a spot where he's going to take them out and vice versa. And, you know, with you having the experience, man, I got all the faith that you got it. I'm glad you do. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, the first time, first time I uh, dumped one, uh, Billy was right behind me. I think you actually won that race in Orange Beach, Alabama, or you were, you did really well Can't because. Remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember I was... we were, it, it was you and Johnny. I don't remember if it was and... 05 or 06. Yeah. I think and you know, I, I remember we were, yeah, we were all over you guys, but couldn't quite get around you. And we went into the turn by the inlet and yeah. I watched it kind of skip out. And it, you saved yeah. it, and then it skipped out again, and I'm like, it's not coming back. I'm like, they're done. And as we went by, you could see it in the air rolling. I'm like, ooh, that's a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> it was a big hit. <laughs> yeah. And that was uncharacteristic. 
er, uncharacteristic for you and Johnny. But yeah. I mean, we were that we was, were all pushing. We were pushing hard. Oh, they, those boats. Even though the year was that the 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 engine package had more power than we have now, and the boats were faster. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, like I, I, you could see one forties back then. When today you're seeing upper one thirties. Well, like I think I I said it when we were in Sheboygan last year. I I said something to Tyler and you. I said the old seventy six hundred motor. You were two pitches smaller to run the same speed. But if you ran a 34, you were in the 140s. And the thing accelerated yeah. so much better. I mean, it just, like you said, they had more speed, more power. The longevity wasn't as good. You know, obviously, we were like running race gas motor. higher. Yeah, I mean, it, we were going through them. I think we'd race one race, pull them out, do upper ends, race another race, do a complete rebuild on them. So, I mean, we were going through them pretty yeah. pretty often, but I mean, I hate to say it, we were beating the hell out of them back then, too, because they lived at 7,600. The only time they yeah. come off 7,600 was do a turn. Yeah. Hey, but when they put the 34 pitch limit on us, that was, you know, it was harder on the valve trade, too, because you get to a St. Clair, Michigan or something, you just sit on the rev limiter the whole time. But you were still, yeah, I definitely. remember going down river and, and back then be like 145, 145, 146 with a 34. Yeah. Yeah. I remember St. Clair back straight away, 145, 146, and you're sitting there just eating the limiter a lot. And you're like, man, if I could run a 35, I'd pull <laughs> yeah. it. But we would just hit the limiter just a little bit farther down the course. But yeah, that was, I mean, yeah. those boats yeah. were a lot of fun back then. I mean, Supercat's still a blast, but, you know, I hate to say it. It's like, let's make Supercat great again, put 7,600 back in the thing and some race gas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That'd be fun. Yeah, that, <laughs> the it, owners probably crazy. wouldn't like yeah, it. <laughs> I, yeah. Mike DeAnnabelle would. Oh, he would love it. He'd be doing this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he'd be there. Yeah. Yes, guys, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you guys have been doing this for a long time, 20 some odd years. Do you guys think that you guys are at your prime looking back on 20 years ago as to as to where you're at now, each of you? I think the knowledge you gain is invaluable. So, I don't think physically I'm at my prime like I was then, but I think I'm a way better driver, way better setup man. Take have taken a lot more experiences into the mix, and once you take all that in and you know make it come out, I think you're you're better at it. Uh, I, I think due to the fact that you can't test these boats as much as like a car, and the fact that you're you know kind of limited to a eight race season, you've got to have a long career to be at the top of your game instead of being like, you know, like since we didn't start when we're four years old on a go kart and then you're an F1 when you're 19 years old, we start working our way up the ladder when we're 19 through 30. And then once you're in your thirties to your forties is when you can be in your prime as somebody operating the boat. Yeah, I agree with that. 100%. I I agree with that a hundred percent because Honestly, I don't know if I'm yeah. – I, I think I'm smarter than when I was 20 years ago by all means. I mean, like you said, it's just the experience. You figure out, all right, I can get away with this. I can't get away with that. Your setups are better because, you know, you can – it's you learn the boat a lot quicker, I think, now compared to, you know, 20 years ago. Let's face it, I was probably like a bull in a china shop. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Still yes. might be kind of that way sometimes, but you know, I, I think <laughs> now it's as you get older, you know, the old saying you get wiser and all that stuff, but I think you really see it with the boats because like you said, you're not starting out at a super young age running something every day. You know, I'm in boats 
all the time like you are, Myrick, I'm sure, at performance. But it's not the same. You know, it, it's and not to bag on guys in poker runs or open cockpits. You know, oh, I run my boat really hard. It's not the same when you're strapped in and you're in a canopy with a helmet and a life jacket. You know, it, it's yeah. You, know, you can you can't. I, you can't I've said stay it many times. You, you you put yeah yeah or or just tell somebody to strap in. Let it be a just make a number up. 110 degrees in the cockpit. Go mill around with other boats around you. Don't even get it on plane and feel the stress factor that's going on. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Especially like Sarasota. Race to delay. There's a manatee or a sea turtle out there, and it's 190, it feels like, inside the cockpit. So, Billy, you, you guys are uh, you're working with uh, your, your, your buddy Pete Caldwell on um, checkmate, checkmate boats. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, we got a lot going on. Um, Pete owns Checkmate, and, you know, we're, we got – a bunch of orders. I, I don't remember how many that we got a whole board with them all wrote down. We're starting a th third model. We're doing a 26, a 24, and a 21. Um, the 26 is going to be an inboard boat. A lot of guys are, it, it's like a, almost like a cult following for Checkmate, but a lot of guys keep asking about the inboard stuff. And, you know, so we're, we're starting to try and get that built and, I'm hoping in the next month, month and a half, we'll have the first inboard boat done. Um, we just did a 24 open bow with a 500 that we actually delivered to Florida. We ran it up here in North Carolina and we took it. We ended up taking it down to Lake X and did a little prop testing down there and did the delivery with the gentleman that was buying the boat, which is kind of cool. I haven't been to Lake X since probably like 96, 98. Um, that boat ran right at 90. I feel we could have got more out of it, but we woed it up a little bit because I think with the 500, the gear case being so much bigger, with those guys making the power and having to warranty it, it's a bigger gear case, smaller boat. The boat was kind of getting a little, I don't want to say ill handling, but it was kind of sketchy once you got up into the 90s with it. So we did some bottom work got it to where you could actually drive it one hand 85 87 miles an hour i mean and at 90 it was pretty stable and like like i told pete i'd rather give up a few mile an hour on the top end and have something that you can actually anybody can get it and drive you don't have to be a myrick or you know somebody like that does this for a living to just go put a number up so to speak you know it, it just yeah. You know, we had to work on it, but at the same time, Mercury was a big help. Um, those guys down there were fantastic. Roy was a big help with us down there. So, you know, and I think yeah, we we're Roy, working on getting Roy Mitchell Khalif. sharp. Oh, yeah, he's real sharp. Um, and like I said, it was just cool going back to the lake. I haven't been there in over 20 years, you know, and working with Nick at Merc Racing on some Cleaver stuff. I think with the cleaver, we'll probably get some more out of it. But like I said, for us, we'd rather make it safe than just something that's just super sketchy, but like it throws a number up, but you can't keep it there. I mean, at this thing at 90, I could rip all the way across the lake with it. And, you know, let's face it, it's an open bow. It's a bow rider, so to speak, running 90 miles an hour. At what point do you go, that's fast enough? Cool. But that's moving for a... Uh... That's moving for a single engine outboard V bottom, right? That that's fast. Yeah, I mean, there's some other guys I think that are probably doing stuff a little bit faster. But you know, with the open bow, you got the cushions and the upholstery stuff up there, and you know, speakers, etc. And just the wind dropping in to the open bow. I mean, like I said, I felt ninety was pretty fast in the boat. I mean, let's face it, twenty four foot single engine V bottom. I didn't grow up running the single engine V bottoms really. So to me, 90 and a thing is like, wow. It's like, I feel like I'm running 180 in a big cat. I want, I want 86.7. Got to get that 0.7 in there on a, <laughs> on a 30, 32, 32 sensation today with two 500s on it. Uh, wow. 28 pitch propeller. But 
Yeah. That'd be it's, a wild ride, it, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, that top does give you a little bit of that kind of top-heavy feel, and it might kind of roll back and forth a little bit just because your center gravity, like, not the center gravity back and forth, but your center gravity top to bottom is a little high. But, uh, yeah. no, it, it's it's over over 80. It's you got to drive it a little bit, but it's crazy that mid range. It's it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. They did a they did a great job with the five hundred. I mean, like I said, we mm-hmm. got a, like five or six of them on order with five hundreds, and it, it's like I said, the average guy's not going to hang out at ninety miles an hour in an open bow. Let's face it, that's pretty yeah. quick. He lifted his eyelids ex- off of his eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, you're like, ah, but it's just the acceleration <laughs> is now, you know, and I hate yeah. to say it, this was kind of funny when we were there, we wanted to get some pictures of us, like, with the boat running by the tower, and they were out there with the little chase boat, the pontoon Roy had, and they were like, man, come by, as you come by the tower, turn, like, towards us. And I went down and didn't realize, you know, I wasn't that far. And I turned around and I'm whipping through there and I'm watching the boat. I'm looking at the tower and I start to crank this thing into a turn. I'm running like 81 miles an hour. I'm like, wow, I got to 80 like now. <laughs> yeah, because it just, it yeah. pulls instantly. Yeah, it's fun. Acceleration's just as much fun as top speed. 100%. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And Billy, you're you're, you're pretty uh, impressed with the boats that you guys are putting out with the checkmates. That uh, you even you're even considering running the uh, the Parker Enduro out out this way on the West Coast. Yeah, we're building a race. twenty. Yeah, we're building a twenty one full carbon boat. It's Pete's idea to build a twenty one like <laughs> class seven race boat, but somehow or another, Craig Barry and Pete got to talking about it the other night. Need to do the Parker Endurance run. So Pete, I come in the next morning. He goes, "Hey, I think I got us signed up for this endurance run, and you're running the boat." I'm like, "Where is it at?" He's like, "Parker, Arizona." I'm like, "All right, I'm in." I know nothing about. I text Ray about it. I'm like, "Man, I know nothing about this gig, but it just sounds like a blast." Twenty one footer, endurance, four yeah. hours in the boat, never done nothing like that. Count me in. What's the What's the worst that okay. can happen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob Bob Teague was talking about it a lot when we yeah, had him on the podcast times. one time, and he makes it sound so exciting. And uh, yeah, I'd like to do it one day. Yeah, Dude, I mean, you should campaign I, I, a boat and bring it out here. And... I I feel like it's got to yeah. be a good time. I mean, it, it. Let's face it, we like to race, and we don't ever go out to the West Coast, so to speak, racing anymore. And something like this, even right. though it's a smaller boat, to me, it's all relative. The speed's kind of relative, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you know, the wave action, the boat action, it's all relative. So I'm in. I think it'd be a fun thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I like the idea. Too, too stupid to be, to be scared? <laughs> 100%. I'll probably have to tell myself that. <laughs> <laughs> Full yeah. carbon twenty one like footer. Turn, every turn <laughs> yeah. Like I said, full carbon twenty one <laughs> footer. What's the worst that can happen with this thing? It'd be a little rocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you know, with the stuff that we do at Caldwell, we got a lot going on. We do contract builds for other people. Um, like I said, we own the checkmate name the molds and all that stuff so it 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 keeps me busy i do some other stuff with um tanner uh brokerage stuff we do some like some high-end charter stuff for yachts and things like that blue water uh yacht charter service and we do some stuff overseas working on actually a catamaran from overseas for like pleasure boat stuff you know kind of like luxury yachtish type cat deal so i mean i hate to say it, i wear many hats i probably have too many emails if you know what i mean email addresses so i got too many jobs but it keeps me busy i can't complain billy are you still doing uh anything with uh iconic marine group you're with them and, and working with reggie and uh jeff harris over there and 
Fred Ross. Actually, the last um, few months, we haven't been doing much. We helped get the Donzi stuff up and running from scratch. Uh, we pulled mold out of the weeds, essentially, built a plug, tested it, built production molds, and built, I think, like seven, seven of the VRZs. Uh, center console, 39 center consoles, got those going and sent all that stuff back over there. I mean, we haven't done nothing for them directly um, in the last few months, but, you know, between Iconic, us, and everybody, you know, right there in that little area, we're always, Jeff's always calling Pete for stuff, or we're going over there to pick up stuff. I mean, we're always bouncing back and forth. I saw something on... uh social media the other day where you were i don't know if you were cutting the mold or making a plug for a bustle on a 40 was it a 46 or a skater of some kind it was pretty cool to watch that process go down yeah yeah we we actually have uh it's actually some friends of ours that have a tooling company we have the cnc machine in the shop and we have a 46 skater supreme it's a big project. We're doing full paint. We're adding a bustle. We're doing a bunch of re-rigging and stuff like that and different water pickups and all kinds of stuff, which Bob Teague, your guys is, you know, buddies and stuff. They were a big mm-hmm. help with helping me on stuff with that, getting stuff made. But we cut the, the, the plug out, the mold for the bustle. We drew it up in CAD, sent pictures to the customer. He client's happy. He loves the way it's going to look. So we ended up cutting that, which is cool because it's all in-house. We're going to infuse a piece, put it on the boat, attach it, glue it, finish it all off, and then repaint the whole boat for them. So I think it would be a cool project. Sometimes that machine gets <laughs> loud during the day. It's like, can they shut that thing off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So several years ago, I went out to uh, to Washington, North Carolina, and and Billy, uh, Billy and I ran a uh, was it a forty two <laughs> or a bigger lightning fountain? Um, I don't. It might have been that forty seven that they did for uh, oh, yeah, that's right, forty seven lightning with like fifteen fifty, thirteen fifty engines in it, and uh, yeah, and it was <laughs> December and. My dumbass, I packed like I normally would pack. Maybe it's a couple of jeans and a and a light windbreaker. Speed <laughs> yeah, speed. <laughs> Some stockings. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so I was just ill prepared for the cold out there, and we're running boats on the Pamlico, and and uh, Billy. The next day, he must have felt sorry for me. He he showed up with a pair of wool socks for me, and it was like the best gift I've ever gotten in my life. I'm like, oh, oh these are great. <laughs> Yeah, we had a bromance so, moment there. I, I, he was like, "Man, my toes sure. are frozen." There's a little tear that trickled down my cheek. <laughs> so I went to Man, Tractor Supply you. and got like, yeah, went to Tractor Supply and got the heaviest wool socks I could find. I'm like, Ray will love these. I'm gonna hook them up. <laughs> it was like a little bromance. <laughs> oh my god, they're, they're awesome. I even took them. I took them to Saratoga for there the Stoneville cool. rally. Excellent. I mean, how often do you buy socks for a guy? guy. (laughs) Hopefully not much. (laughs) Hey, I I try to be a nice guy. He he needed some help with some socks. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely did. So thanks for that. (laughs) Yeah. And what, hey, I went to uh, the MTI fun run this weekend and that's one place I didn't have socks on the whole time. (laughs) So I liked that. Yeah, I heard uh, yeah. the weather was really nice down there. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm telling you what, if you know anybody that has enough money to buy an MTI, butter them up and tell them to buy one just so you can go on that MTI fun run with them because it is fun as hell. <laughs> I've I've actually yeah. done In the way I've that, done a couple of them. They 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 do a first class job. Oh, it's nuts. Uh, we, we pulled up to Gilbert's and there's like this guy coming at you with an MTI shirt on. You're like, oh, oh, what'd we do? Next thing you know, he pulls out his rag and his freaking uh, his uh, plexus and he's cleaning the window off. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, this is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. 
it, it's kind of like you get spoiled Damn. going. I mean, when I went a couple different yeah. times, we were down there in Marathon, and they're helping you fuel the boats. They'll fuel the boats for you. I'm like, guys, what am I going to oh, do? Yeah. 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 M- Milton and his crew. Well, the whole MTI crew, but Milton and his crew from – washing the boats to, you know, I mean, there's some people that actually, you know, suck some sand up. They're out there back flushing QC four V's. And you're just like, Oh yeah, man. Yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty awesome. I, I was totally impressed and I wanted to give them, you know, it had been a few years since I'd been on it. And uh, I just wanted to give them kudos. And those 42 and 50 V's are, the cat's ass. I mean, when you're running 85 miles an hour and you got, you know, eight, ten people in there, it feels like feels like you're going 140 because you know this thing's just eating it up, and it's 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 a cool deal. And stereo rocking and all the girls having a good time. It's it's a fun yeah. fun event. No, definitely. Well, on top of that, Mark, you said that uh, Randy took you out uh, on that new 482. Oh yeah. What was that like? So yeah, so uh Sean had came over to me that cuz I I had went went down to go on that 482 ride on uh Friday morning and it was just I had been playing pickleball and and uh, you know I could tell that you know I just didn't hit the timing right and Randy goes, "Oh, we'll do it tomorrow." I'm like, "Okay." So uh we Sean came over to me during the raft up and he said, "Hey, eight o'clock tomorrow morning." And that sound, you know, at three in the afternoon, that sounded like a pretty good time to <laughs> to go for a boat ride. But you know, my dumb ass, self inflicted wounds. Uh, we get <laughs> we get up, we we get up. You know, uh, Rusty, our customer Chad Rootsill, and uh, and me, and we go down and and meet Randy. And I think he was surprised to see us. Even he kind of spins around and goes, "You're here." And it was, you know, we were, it was like eight oh five. They had the boat already, and uh, we 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 hop in the boat. And he goes, "Well, you're driving." I'm like, "Okay." And uh, you, you know, this is uh, their their new 482, which is number one, and uh, 1100 turbos, up to a three year warranty. And we had four guys in it, a lot of fuel. We're on the rev limiter at like 147, like that. And of course, I'm driving. I'm looking over at Randy, and he's just smiling. I think he actually said, yippee ki <laughs> you know, so, uh, And I'm like, okay, well, we're rolling, you know. And I start turning it, and we go under the bridge, and we run it downwind, and it's just the boat is unbelievable. I mean, pretty much rev limiter, 145 to 147 the whole time. Uh, he had it propped a little short just, for, you know, for that cool acceleration ride. And it was bumpy on the outside. So we were running like 125, 130 out there in some bump. But then underneath the bridge, uh, I start turning it. And I'm like, yeah, and Chad's to my left. And Randy's throttling and Rusty's over there. And sh- I think Sean was laid down in the back just holding on for dear life. And uh, <laughs> uh, we're, we're flying around. And he he he. he I ripped the wheel pretty. He goes, turn it. And I'm like, feel like I'm turning. He goes, no, turn it. And I'm like, holy shit. So he actually pushes on the wheel and I'm like, easy. You know, and this thing just rips a turn. And I'm like, holy cow. And uh, Randy turns to uh, Chad, goes, you want to drive? And Chad goes, absolutely not. <laughs> it was, it, it was, it was great. So then we well, then we fly back into the bridge, take a ride, and you know it's probably a ten minute ride. But talk about it's like I don't know, it, it it's the best adrenaline. It's like drinking ten cups of coffee, you know, and just getting yeah. all that caffeine and in, in like five seconds. So it's <laughs> it's so so cool. Well, and, I mean, you, had, you know, you had dri- driven the uh, a lot of previous 48s what's what's the oh, new one feel like compared to the other ones very nimble very uh I'll, whatever i i think i even mentioned it to him when we were idling back in i was like the what they have learned with the the process of lamination over the past 
five years, six years, just due to the fact that outboard cats are so limited in uh, horsepower. Well, not so much now, but say, for example, we started out with 400 horsepower aside, 450 aside, 500 aside, and then you put six big dudes in there. And, you know, I was like, well, what, what's wrong with this thing is like, well, it's the six big dudes is the problem. You know? yeah. So, so now you're trying to come up with this way to lighten up the boat, but still keep it strong not have stress cracks, not have, you know, uh, stringers, bulkheads and all that stuff busting up. Uh, they've learned so much in the outboard side of things that going to the, uh, the big boats, which, you know, the inboard boats, uh, Basically, they're 48 and they're 52, which they're 48 is their bread and butter, uh, has really just showed. Because I can remember outboard rotation on an older 48 MTI. Uh, you know, you kind of hit the trim button a few times and you don't really feel the nose lift up until you hit that 90 to 100 mile an hour mark uh, to where the air gets under it and starts to lift. Now it's like, Man, you bump that trim button at 40 miles an hour, that nose lifts up and, and you know, it carries. And that's obviously what you want that way because you can always hit the trim button down to, uh, but, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's nimble. It's, it's, it's bad to the bone. It's yeah. bad to the bone. Now, Randy builds a nice piece. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The fact that they're getting to, Almost 70 of them a year is mind-blowing. He's got the manufacturing side. He, he's, he's got it bang on with the production stuff like that. And he's got a good team out there. So Randy Randy's pretty sharp with that stuff. Billy, when you go pleasure boating, what do you run? I haven't been pleasure boating in a couple of years, unfortunately. I mean, I got Billy. a skiff out in the yard. And every once in a while, <laughs> I'll take it down at the end of the road. I got a ramp at the end of my road and put the skiff in the water and go out, watch the sunset, drink a couple beers, park it, come back, park it in the yard. And I don't have a ton of money in it. And it's one of those things I can just park it and not worry about it. I have a 35 fountain that I've owned a couple of years. And I hate to admit this. I would be lucky if I have two hours in it myself. Wow. <laughs> Just, Just too busy. I hate too many it. hats. Well, well, too many hats, too many email addresses. I think most of it is I'm around boats all the time, and I'm always running something or testing something or whatever. For me, sometimes it's like when I get home, I'm a kind of a homebody now. I just come home, relax, you know, jump on the side-by-side, -side, ride through the neighborhood, which my neighborhood, I'm out in the sticks. You know, ride the property, go down to the river on the side by side. But for the most part, I do like to go pleasure boating. My problem is I don't find time to go pleasure boating just myself, like I should. I yeah. get it. Yeah, same. I mean, you, I put sure. a new engine in my boat last year, and I took it out three times. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's one of those but things. Billy, uh, you just mentioned something. You are slowing down. I mean, not on the race course, of course, but uh, you've got yourself a girl and you're going to get married and settle down and all that other good stuff, huh? Yeah, man. It's just life's good. I can't complain. You know, it's nice coming home, dinner cooking type deal and, you know, nice and quiet, relaxing. It's not chaos. You know, it's kind of nice. <laughs> Don't come over to my house. <laughs> 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 right, I see you looking around like, uh. <laughs> yeah, seeing why it's so quiet. It's usually scary <laughs> when it's so quiet. Yeah, last time, I, last time on. I was over there, there was a wrestling battle royale happening on the couch, yeah. <laughs> they were taking each other out. <laughs> yeah, last two nights have been high school baseball games for Preston and then Kennedy, and Missy's going out of town for a bachelor at party of Jess's this weekend. Oh, shoot. So, yeah, so the girls are heading out on the town, or they're going to Scottsdale, Arizona. So it's going to be daddy daycare here. So we'll be lucky <laughs> if the uh, – we should probably check the batteries and the smoke detectors and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, Billy, no. for your uh, your Supercat team and your Class 1 team, what uh, what 
races do you have on your schedule? Um, Supercat, I think we're doing pretty much the full schedule. Um, you know, they're re-rigging the boat pretty much right now down there in Fort Myers. Um, Raymond from Double R, he's got some partners in a company down there, Southern Marine. Um, they do a real bang up job with the boat. They're redoing a bunch of stuff, going full digital dash with like the, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Not, it, it's going to have actual telemetry and all that stuff. So they can kind of read what's going on, see what's going on. Cause I hate to say it. Sometimes I don't watch the gauges, but if you're going fast enough, man, you can't watch that stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, so looking forward to that. I think Supercat's going to be real good this year for us. Um, and with the class one team, DeFalco, you know, we're doing a complete re rig on this boat. It was, it had Sterling's in it last. So we're going to the Mercury 1100, which is standard for the class, you know, the goal is for that once it hits the water, you know, we got turn buoys and all the stuff. We're just going to test, test, test. So, and, you know, same thing with Great L. Probably in the next few weeks, that boat will be ready. We'll take it down in Fort Myers, set up a course, go run the boat, and just, you know, get acclimated to that boat again. We're down five weeks on Super Cat and 11 weeks on Class 1. So, no pressure. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it's coming quick, it, it, and it's coming regardless if you're ready or not. <laughs> but I, I yeah, have so all says, the faith uh, in the boys. Well, both of you guys are, are definitely doing double duty, Myrick. Are you doing uh, triple duty again? For four, at least four races, yeah. With so, performance and fast? Yeah, with the uh, fast diesel systems boat, uh, uh, performance boat center, a stock class, uh we will do a lake race. Let me get this right. Lake race, Sarasota, since it's not on 4th of July, thank God. Uh, let me think of the other one. Key West, and maybe Marathon. We're going to try some uh, changing out some things on the little boat, and we'll see that what happens if we have it done in time, but yeah. So at least three races, maybe four. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Lake race, Sarasota, Key West, maybe Marathon. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining about the, uh, the, the triple duty thing, but you know, when it, it, it can, it can get to you after, you know, especially if you don't do good, <laughs> then it really, you know, your team owner looks back at you like, you know, why are you spending too much time focusing on the boat that you did good in or, you know, that kind of thing. And I, I don't think it really affects me that way, but I can see where somebody that's, you know, paying my way could get flustered, you know. I, I was going to say, like, jumping from boat to boat, they're all different no matter how much you try to set them up where they're the same. They're all different. They all handle a little different, you know, the power characteristic. So, I mean, it takes like a lap or so to push the other boat out of your mind and remember, all right, this is what this boat likes or needs or wants. And then it, then it's back to repetition, muscle memory. But like the first lap, I feel like you really have to focus. Is there a benefit to running Supercat first and then Class 1 or f vice versa? Oh, 100% because you don't, you know, just standing there looking at the water, you get an idea, you get a pretty good idea, but you don't see the entire course. So going out in one boat, you can always, when you come back in, everybody's like, what's it like? What do we need to change? Do we need to do this? Do we need to... So it gives you a heads up for the following class. <laughs> I think there, Billy. You, man. Yeah, I don't. I, this fucking laptop. <laughs> no, it, it honestly <laughs> it gives you. I'm gonna sling this thing out in the yard when when we're done tonight. I don't. I mean, I use it at work, but that's about it. And I got an iPad that I use, but you were like, "Hey, use the laptop." So. I'm wondering, chuck out the window. Um, 
No, I honestly, I think running two boats, the second boat, you definitely have a better understanding of what you should do for a setup for that day. Um, Because let's face it, standing on the beach, standing at the dock, you can only see so much of the course. So it definitely helps out being able to run one first and come back in and, you know, make a last minute change, so to speak. I have had it bite me in the ass too. Because how so? Like say, fucking ten minutes later, it picked up, and you know we might be, you know, and and then you're telling the guy that you t- told the setup to say I'm out there in the stock boat, run hundred miles an hour, and say for example, I know that the Super Cat's you know fifteen mile an hour faster. I say, hey, we're gonna run about one fifteen to one eighteen Super Cat proper for that, and then I'll go out there and it picked up or laid down you know by and i mean sometimes it might be during the race from the beginning of the race to the end of the race and you just like sorry it wasn't this way when (laughs) when we were out here earlier i know it was i know it was 10 minutes ago and they're like how could it change that much i'm like it really (laughs) can man (laughs) i'm sorry (laughs) oh yeah i mean how many times have you started a race and it's either rough as shit and it lays down and then you're sitting there buzzing the limiter yeah. the whole time or you start the race yeah. and it's not that bumpy and then all of a sudden at the end of the race, you're like, Jesus Christ, where did this come from? Yeah. 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 It'll whip and, up you know, them great, quick. Them, yeah, them Great Lakes will do it to you too. Worse than the ocean. <laughs> them Great Lakes will bite your ass. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Sheboygan last year, when we went out to test, you guys started yeah. out, and I didn't realize you, like, went maybe a quarter mile and turned back in. And I'm like, oh, we'll go out. We can run in this shit. I get out there in that 48-hour limits, and I'm trying to have a go at it. And I'm, oh, I can go a little harder. <laughs> it's, like, big, really big. <laughs> and I think yeah. we stood that, I mean, we stood that 48 up. Big time. I was like, oh, I got to really be screwing up to stand this thing up out here. So I tuck it back in and I'm like, all right, we're good. And I'm having a go at it, having a go. And I'm, yeah, I'm looking at the speedo going, man, I got to be able to run over 100 in this. Well, it's probably six foot, seven foot. And I'm having a go at it and then I'm about trip it and stuff it. And I go, yeah, screw this. Let's just go back in. We're the only idiots out here right now. <laughs> yeah <laughs> what a, and you, what you feel doing? so bad because you've set the boat you've worked for weeks you drive the boat there you set up the tents you do all this shit and then they're like why aren't you out there testing and you go have you fucking seen it out there <laughs> that's why i was <laughs> testing you know i mean and then they're like and then you're like yeah well we're just hoping that it ain't the same way on race day <laughs> you know that kind of thing <laughs> Oh, dude, I mean, I well, remember, like I said, go. It, it's literally like it was like running over small school buses out there. It's like, and I tried to run a couple <laughs> out. I go, what? And I actually told myself, what the fuck are you doing out here? Because I'm looking around. Yeah. I'm like, we're the only clowns out here. Why are we out here? Like, let's go park yeah. this thing for a while. Yeah. Well, Billy, oh, you yeah. said I, I, you would. You and Tyler have different strategies before uh, before getting um, getting into the uh, race boats, right? as far as you like to eat and he doesn't? Yeah, I always like to pick on Tyler because he won't eat, I guess, before a race. And I'm just like, just yeah. a hog. Like, yeah. It's rough. I need two cheeseburgers. I'm going to move the CG forward with a cheeseburger <laughs> at a time. Worst case scenario, <laughs> slide my feet forward a little bit. We'll make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's my advantage in the yeah. rough. You got to tell Tyler he's got to eat a couple there cheeseburgers. I mean, we just <laughs> we just figured it out. It's the difference between two thirty, two forty, and one hundred and ninety. <laughs> hey, big boys are going to eat. <laughs> yeah. Was that you told me? Uh, fat guys don't run track. No, we don't run track, and we're not good at hurdles. We're going to mow across the hurdles. We're not jumping shit. We're just going to mow it down. 
<laughs> like I said, just slide my seat a little farther forward. Uh, I'll knock that stuff down in front of me. Don't worry. Yeah. If you've ever seen Billy's calves, he his calves are bigger than my entire leg. Yeah, it's like a redwood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's toting my fat ass around. <laughs> Funny. That's great. At well, least, guys, at like, least, yeah. Uh, at least the uh, your Wi-Fi didn't cut out for that one. <laughs> <laughs> the Boondocks Wi-Fi, the Eastern North Carolina Wi-Fi. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna no. call them up tomorrow morning and be like, "You guys fucking suck." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Who's your next step up from dial up? Right. That's what I feel. That's I got one step up from dial up. That's about it. <laughs> well, listen, guys, I look forward to seeing you guys compete against each other this season. It's going to be super exciting. Um, both of you guys are, are top notch and, and uh, love the both of you. So, Billy, thanks for coming on with us. This has been no, thank uh, you guys. Fun time chatting with you. Yeah, yes, I, I look forward yeah, to racing. Come- it, it, it's I look forward to racing all the teams out there. I mean, we got a good group of guys in SuperCat, good group of guys in Class One. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it yes, should definitely sir. be an exciting season. So yes, sir. This has been another episode of the Boats and Bros podcast with our guest, Offshore Champion Billy Moore, and my bro Myra <laughs> Coyle. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, um, and watch for the next episode. Billy, thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. This podcast is powered by Speedboat Magazine. Subscribe now at speedboat.com for nine power-packed print issues a year direct to your mailbox.